President. Senator from Georgia. Ask unanimous consent the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. On behalf of the minority side, we'd like to yield back the balance of our time. All time has expired. Under the previous order, the question occurs on the adoption of the conference report to accompany H.R. 658. The Senator can, from West Virginia. Can I ask for the A's and A's, please? Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Alexander, Ms. Ayat, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Baucus, Mr. Begich, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bingaman, Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer, Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Carden, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey, Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates, Mr. Coburn, Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Coons. Mr. Corker, Mr. Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Enzi, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Franken, Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley, Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Heller, Mr. Hoven, Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inhofe. Mr. Inoue, Mr. Isaacson, Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrieu, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, 
Mrs. Shaheen. Mr. Shelby. Ms. Snow. Ms. Stabenow. Mr. Tester. Mr. Soon. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Vitter. Mr. Warner. Mr. Webb. Mr. Whitehouse. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Ayotte, Baucus, Bingaman, Boxer, Burr, Cochran, Feinstein, Hutchison, Inhofe, Isaacson, Johans, Roberts, Rockefeller, Rubio, Shelby, Tester, Wicker, and Wyden. Senators voting in the negative, Cardin, DeMint, and Harkin. Mr. Pryor, Mr. Pryor, aye. Mr. Coburn, Mr. Coburn, aye. Mrs. Gillibrand, Mrs. Gillibrand, no. Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, aye. Mr. Levin, Mr. Levin, aye.
Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, aye. Mr. Franken, Mr. Franken, no. Mr. Grassley. Mr. Grassley, aye. Mr. Coates, Mr. Coates, aye. Ms. Cantwell? Ms. Cantwell, aye. Mr. Paul? Mr. Paul, no. Mr. Sessions? Mr. Sessions, aye. Mr. Nelson, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, aye. Mrs. Shaheen, Mrs. Shaheen, aye. Mr. Bozeman, Mr. Bozeman, aye. Mr. Heller, Mr. Heller, aye. Mr. Luger, Mr. Luger, aye. Mr. Inoue? Mr. Inoue? Aye. Mr. Nelson? Mr. Nelson of Florida? Aye. Ms. Collins, Ms. Collins, aye. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, aye. Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Whitehouse, aye. Mr. Webb, Mr. Webb, aye. Mr. Leahy? Mr. Alexander? 
Mr. Alexander, aye. Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, aye. Mr. Udall, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, aye. Mr. Kyle, Mr. Kyle, aye. Mr. Carper, Mr. Carper, aye. Mr. Blunt, Mr. Blunt, aye. Mr. Corker, Mr. Corker, aye. Mr. Leahy, Mr. Leahy, no. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown of Ohio, no. Mr. Sanders, Mr. Sanders, no. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, aye. Mr. Enzi, Mr. Enzi, aye. Ms. Landrew, Ms. Landrew, aye. Ms. Snow, Ms. Snow, aye. Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Lautenberg, aye. Ms. Mikulski, Ms. Mikulski, no. Mr. Hoven, Mr. Hoven, aye. Mr. Casey, Mr. Casey, no. Mr. Carey, Mr. Carey, aye. Mr. Toomey, Mr. Toomey, aye. Mr. Crapo, Mr. Crapo, no. Mr. Risch, Mr. Risch, no. Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Chambliss, aye. Mr. Graham, Mr. Graham, Mr. Warner, Mr. Warner, aye. Mr. Manchin, Mr. Manchin, aye. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bennett, aye.
Mr. McCain. Mr. McCain, aye. Mr. Merkley, Mr. Merkley, no. Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, no. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Akaka, no. Mr. Moran, Mr. Moran, aye. Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman, aye. Ms. Murkowski, Ms. Murkowski, aye. Mr. Menendez, Mr. Menendez, aye. Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blumenthal, no. Mr. McConnell, Mr. McConnell, aye. Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Cornyn, aye. Mrs. Hagan, Mrs. Hagan, aye. Mr. Thune, Mr. Thune, aye. Mr. Portman, Mr. Portman, aye. Mr. Udall. Mr. Udall of Colorado, aye. Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed of Nevada, aye.
Mr. Coons? Mr. Coons? Aye. Mr. Durbin, Mr. Durbin, aye. Mrs. Murray, Mrs. Murray. Is everything now okay? Aye. Mr. Baggage, Mr. Baggage. Aye. Mrs. McCaskill, Mrs. McCaskill, no. Mr. Schumer, Mr. Schumer, aye. Ms. Stabenow, Ms. Stabenow, no. Ms. Klobuchar, Ms. Klobuchar, no.
Are there any senators wishing to vote or to change your vote? Hearing none, the yeas are 75, the nays are 20 on the conference report to accompany H.R. 658. The conference report is agreed to. Madam President. The Majority Leader. As unanimous consent, we now proceed to appear to morning business. Senators are allowed to speak for up to 10 minutes each. There will be no more votes tonight. Are there any objections? Without objection, so ordered. President? The Senator from Ohio. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity this evening to recognize the remarkable achievements of a former Senator from Ohio. The state of Ohio, as you know, is known as the birthplace of aviation. It's the home of the Wright brothers, after all, but it's also the home to 24 astronauts. I've had the privilege of calling two of the most famous of those astronauts, Neil Armstrong and John Glenn, my friends. Today, I'd like to take a few minutes to commemorate the tremendous achievements of one of those heroes by celebrating the 50th anniversary of the historic 1962 flight of NASA's Mercury spacecraft, nicknamed Friendship 7. Fifty years ago, on February 20th, 1962, Friendship 7, piloted by John Glenn, performed three successful orbits of the Earth at 17,400 miles per hour and made John Glenn the first American to orbit the Earth. While in orbit, John Glenn performed a series of breakthrough experiments to test human ability to function in the weightlessness of space. He then successfully piloted the spacecraft manually after a malfunction in the automatic flight controls, overcoming severe oscillation and a dwindling fuel supply during re-entry, completing the mission by landing the spacecraft safely in the Atlantic Ocean, four hours, 55 minutes, and 23 seconds after the initial launch. He returned a national hero. His historic flight inspired scientific curiosity and national enthusiasm for further space exploration, paving the way for America's continued dominance in space operations. Of course, we remember him here in the Senate uh, very well, and we remember that in 1998, then-Senator Glenn again demonstrated his tremendous courage and re-entered space at the age of 77 aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery, of course, to examine the effect of space flight on the elderly. Space exploration, however, is not Senator Glenn's only remarkable achievement. He set the transcontinental speed record in 1957 for the first flight to average supersonic speed, flying at an average speed of 723 miles per hour from Los Angeles to New York. In addition to these contributions to scientific exploration and NASA, 
John Glenn gave 23 years of service to the Marine Corps. He's a veteran of two wars. He flew 149 combat missions. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross five times, and he retired as a colonel in 1965. Ten years later, he began a career in the United States Senate, contributing 24 years of service to the Senate from the state of Ohio from 1975 until 1999. In 1998, the John Glenn Institute for Public Service and Public Policy at the Ohio State University was created, and Senator Glenn became an adjunct professor at Ohio State School of Public Policy and Management. Then, in 2006, the John Glenn Institute merged with the School of Public Policy and Management to form the John Glenn School of Public Affairs at The Ohio State University, which prepares future generations of public servants. I've had the privilege of co-teaching four classes at the Glenn School prior to coming to the Senate, and I still have the honor of serving on the Board of Advisors of the Glenn School, along with Senator Glenn and his incredible wife, Annie. She has been a tremendous partner for Senator Glenn through all of uh, these experiences we're talking about tonight. Senator Glenn's achievements have paved the way for future generations to follow in his footsteps by continuing to make the United States a global leader in science, technology, and education. So, on the 50th anniversary, we commend Senator John Glenn on the, on the historic and successful 1962 flight above NASA spacecraft Friendship 7. And we'd also like to take a moment to recognize him for his outstanding accomplishments, not just as an astronaut, but as a fighter pilot and as a United States Senator. We thank him for his public service to our country. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor, and I suggest the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka.
The senator from Illinois. Suspended. Without objection. As consent, the Senate proceeded to the following items on block. Calendar number 234 S1794 and calendar number 235 HR 347. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent the committee reported amendments to each bill be agreed to on block, that both bills as amended be read a third time and passed on block, that the motions to reconsider be laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate, and any statements related to the bills be placed in the record at the appropriate places if read. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to Senate Resolution 368 submitted earlier today. The clerk will report. S.R.S. 368, recognizing the anniversary of the tragic earthquake in Haiti on January 12, 2010, and so forth. Without objection, the Senate will proceed to the measure. I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, the motion to reconsider be laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate, and any statements be placed in the record as a friend. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent the Senate adjourn until 10 a.m. on Tuesday, February 7, 2012, that following the prayer and pledge, the journal of proceedings be approved to date, the morning hour be deemed expired, and the time for the two leaders be reserved for their use later in the day, that following any leader remarks, the Senate be in a period of morning business until 12, 1230 p.m., with senators permitted to speak therein for up to 10 minutes each, with the time equally divided and controlled between the two leaders or their designees, with the Republicans controlling the first 30 minutes and the majority controlling the second 30 minutes. Finally, that the Senate recess from 12.30 p.m. until 2.15 p.m. to allow for the weekly caucus meeting. Without objection. Madam President, we hope to begin consideration of the Surface Transportation Bill tomorrow, and if there's no further business to come before the Senate, I ask that it adjourn under the previous order. The Senate stands adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow. The Senate's gaveled out, but earlier today, members passed.